Fun factor is above average. Fire Emblem Three Houses is basically structured like a game of chess. For one, the battle maps are essentially chess boards, and second, you have a large array of different classes that directly counter each other, which gets you to think a lot about placement and attack damage. It wasn't really something I was expecting to enjoy, but in the end, I always found myself drawn not, not only into the strategy, but also the thrill of watching my students transform from timid children into genuine warriors. Mechanical depth and longevity is a mixed bag, above average overall. First of all, Three Houses is pretty long to start. It took me around 30 hours to hit the midpoint, and I estimate it'll take me another 20 to 30 to actually finish the game. On top of that, it's a game designed with replay value in mind. It features three different main story paths to go down depending on whether you ally yourself with the Adrestian Empire, Lester Alliance, or the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Each house comes with its own set of students who have different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses, meaning your play playthroughs will be different from a gameplay perspective as well as a narrative one. The thing is, I'm not certain if second and third playthroughs will be all that fun. Despite the fact that this is a tactical RPG of a grand scale, I get the sense that there really isn't a whole lot of meaningful gameplay depth to carry the game through 150 hours of content. Once you figure out which classes counter what, you're finished, there's just not that much else to learn from there onwards. Level design is subpar. Initially, I thought it was pretty great. The levels start off as basic fields, but urban battles are where things get pretty interesting. There's a lot of places to flank and get around groups of enemies that would otherwise be lethal. However, after 30 hours, it all starts to feel samey. You can either meet the opposing force head on or flank around them. Two options for a 60 hour video game. It gets boring after a while. Feature necessity and balance is subpar. Fire Emblem Three Houses is not a well-balanced game, and this only becomes even more apparent as you get further into it. It's just balanced in your favor, which isn't as bad. After 30 hours, your player character is basically invincible. They have a crit rate of 40%, they resist all physical damage, and they're incredibly mobile, meaning they can dodge about half of all attacks. Even the students under your command are pretty OP, so long as you don't deliberately throw them against fighters that counter their class. In general, they deal more damage and have more health than whoever they're fighting. This sounds fine, but this is a 60 hour game. The player needs to be constantly challenged in order to keep their attention, and if they aren't, then the game ceases to be fun. I was playing on normal difficulty. Three Houses also has a hard difficulty, as well as an alternative mode called Classic Mode. Classic Mode is actually pretty interesting. It basically introduces permadeath on all of your units, so if you lose one, they're gone forever and you can't replace them. This is really awesome because it ensures that you actually think everything through, and in combination with a mechanic that allows you to rewind time, you're able to finish every battle without losing a single unit while also being legitimately challenged to keep them alive. This would be the very best way to play the game if the game was actually designed around classic mode, which it isn't. I figured this out the hard way, as I actually started a playthrough on classic mode with the Adrestian Empire before switching to casual with the Leicester Alliance. The thing is, when someone dies in classic mode, they're not actually dead. They still appear in cutscenes, they're still present in the game world, and I believe you can still still do their missions. Correct me if I'm wrong, not that it'll change anything. This just feels really cheap. You'd expect there to be genuine consequences when a student dies outside of, oh no, I can't see them in battle anymore, like, for example, a drop in professor rating or a drop in morale, and of course, they shouldn't be present in the game world. From a raw gameplay perspective, it is better to play in classic mode, but it perforates the story so badly that I just didn't want to continue on in that mode, and so I restarted in casual with a new alliance. Consistency and controls aren't applicable. Three Houses is a tactical turn-based RPG. Precise, speedy controls just aren't important. Voice acting and dialogue is subpar. The dialogue is average and not as witty as you'd like, and the voice acting isn't terrible, but it's not terribly convincing. There's nothing more to really be said. Unpredictability is great. I hated this game's central twist, but the twists in the stories of your students hold up nicely, revealing hidden tensions and secret identities. There's also the question of your player character hired as a professor at the Garig Mach Monastery, despite having been raised in total isolation from its church. Everything about you is incorrect, you're a mystery that the game tries to solve throughout the whole first half. Coherence and world building is very much a mixed bag, average overall. It's difficult to explain myself without spoiling the story, so here's your spoiler warning. I'll throw a timestamp in the description so you can skip it. The world building is a real treat. There's about a thousand years of history to explore in Three Houses, the founding of the church, the hero's relics, the eventual war caused by them, the unification and fracture of Fodlin. In addition to this written history, you also have more detailed, focused exposition 
fiction centered around individual characters and their houses. Some were sent to Fodlin as a political gesture, some were sent based only on their abilities, and some were sent to ensure the continuation of their noble line. It's almost scary how archaic Fodlin is as a country, fitting considering this game's medieval look. However, there's also a part of this that the game's central twist completely ruins. It's eventually revealed that the church has secretly been ruling the country from the shadows, punishing people not for sin, but for opposition. In fact, you fight a lot of battles where you route armies for the crime of worshipping the same god, but in a different fashion than the Church of Saros. In fact, it's revealed that you were created by the church in some kind of experiment, which killed your mother and left you without a real soul for the purpose of resurrecting Sothis, the progenitor god. That's really sinister, and I feel like it makes a lot more sense to rebel against the church in the face of everything that they've done. And yet, for whatever reason, as soon as Edelgard is revealed as a flame emperor, the game just forgets about all that dark shit that the church was up to, and automatically allies you with the church. I mean, they're very much the villain in this story, and it's just not okay to simply pretend that the first half of the game doesn't exist. Now, it's important to note that the game's narrative has branching paths depending on what house you're allied with. However, in the four of them, there was only one that actually sees you fighting against the church. In four paths, there's only one that actually makes sense. At this point, I stopped playing the game because I was just so annoyed that the game decided to go down that path. It just feels really disgusting to fight for a faction that's so obviously authoritarian. I would have loved it if I actually got a choice to ally myself with Edelgard rather than the church, but instead it's all decided with invisible hands. Characterization is excellent. In a game where your purpose is to teach students and direct them towards success, the characters absolutely have to be well developed, and luckily they are. One of the really cool things I found is that a character's views and personality tend to define their role in combat. Some people are practically pacifists, and so they're better suited to support roles. Some people would rather stay away from combat, and so they're better suited to archer roles, while other students have varying degrees of aggression, and so they're better in combat roles. They might also be animal lovers, which boosts their riding and flying skills, or they might prefer intellect to religion, which makes them good at spinning spells of dark magic. The game also places emphasis on building meaningful relationships with your students as this builds their motivation which allows you to level up their skills, and you also get boosts in combat if you place two connected students next to each other, and plus you get to learn more about them. Lorenz, for example, is partially characterized as an uppity noble with too much of a fondness for women, but he harasses them more or less on accident, as his family sees it as a necessity that he marries a noblewoman of sufficient power. Ignatz was sent to the monastery so he can become a knight to support his family as his brother is slated to receive the family inheritance instead. However, Ignatz secretly has ambitions of becoming an artist instead. Leonie sees herself as a true apprentice of Geralt, the father of your player character, and as such, the two of you frequently come into conflict as Leonie believes that she's better than you. There are 30-something students in this story, and each of them has a fully realized backstory complete with ambitions, obligations, and secrets, which makes makes them completely relatable on almost every level. Thematic strength is above average. The general idea I get from Fire Emblem's story is tried and true. War is hell. It's really easy to build a connection with specific characters, and so it really hurts to see one of them fall in battle, just as it's thoroughly thrilling to see them overcome their weaknesses. You also get to see a lot of the realities of medieval upper-class life. Kids have to do things for their family to ensure the survival of their lineage, and sometimes they might be coerced into doing things that they just don't want to do, like marrying this person from this family, or starting a career in something undesirable but financially lucrative. It's almost sort of dark as they're all really ambitious, but that ambition is snuffed out by the needs of their family and by the tides of war. Art style is above average. I'm pretty impressed by the geometric detail on buildings and characters, and the semi cell shaded look gives the game some distinction. At the same time, I have my concerns about how well it's going to age in the future. It's not like we haven't really seen this kind of thing before, and the Switch already has trouble rendering the game considering the blatant aliasing. The other pet peeve I have is that the game is kind of difficult to play in handheld mode. The UI is tiny, and it's hard to make out smaller details on a screen that's only about 6x3 wide and high. It really seems like it was meant for a TV screen, and if you mostly use the Switch as a handheld, it might be better off finding something with UI that isn't so small. Animation is great. Facial animations sort of suck, but the battle animations are really slick and over the top, especially on critical attacks and counter attacks. Sound is average, and I have no real comments on it. Bug severity is average. There are no big, bad game-breaking bugs or really anything that significantly affects gameplay at any point. However, I did notice that the Switch definitely has trouble handling this game. Big 
frame rate drops and engine slowdown are common in places with long view distance or thick clouds of particles, however, since this is a turn-based RPG, it's not all that bad. Soundtrack is great. This game's main theme is really distinctive and memorable, and it constantly gets little callbacks in just about every part of the game. The battle music is also really awesome, though it's more electronic than I'd like, but it's okay as it delivers a really strong sense of grandeur that carries a lot of the atmosphere of this game. Microtransaction fairness is inapplicable. As far as I can tell, this game doesn't really have any microtransactions. Atmosphere is great. Not unlike Persona 5, Three Houses builds a lot of its atmosphere through gameplay and narrative rather than audio engineering. Social simulation elements are one of the foundations that this game is built on, encouraging you to build meaningful relationships with your students by interacting with the various activities throughout the monastery, sharing meals, cooking together, taking on their side missions, buying them gifts, and talking with them over tea. It puts you in the role of a professor in a way that feels natural, although I never thought it was as well developed as Persona 5. Player agency is great. Throughout the game, you get a lot of dialogue options that affect your relationships with other people, and in turn, that can affect what narrative paths you can take. Of course, you also get to pick from your choice of multiple different factions, which ensures that this game has a certain degree of replay value. Innovation is above average. I'm not qualified to tell you how unique this game is within the tactical RPG genre, but what I can say is that its Harry Potter-esque canvas is enough to set it apart from most other games that you might be aware of. Pacing is poor. By the time I got to the halfway point of this game, I just wanted to be done with it. My fighters were unkillable, my enemies were being torn apart with no thought, the game was getting long in the tooth. While I feel like the first half was solid enough, it didn't really keep me interested enough to continue playing it through the second. There's a lack in level and enemy variety that would otherwise make the game a lot more interesting. Overall, Fire Emblem Three Houses earns a 15.0 in gameplay, a 17.0 in narrative, a 17.5 in polish, and a 17.0 in the miscellaneous category. This this gives Fire Emblem Three Houses a score of 66.5, which I'm rounding up to a 67 out of 100, placing it in mid-tier, and tying it with Tales of Berseria in between Killing Floor 2 and Far Cry 5. This is the first tactical RPG I've reviewed, so technically it doesn't have any competitors, however, since it's part of a subset of RPGs, I can still compare it to Tales of Berseria, Persona 5, and Final Fantasy 15. In a head-to-head -head comparison between Tales and Fire Emblem, the two are equals, but only because they make up where the other one falters. The two are roughly equal in gameplay, though I feel like Berseria is slightly better due to its faster-paced combat. Tales of Berseria is the clear winner when it comes to narrative, however, as it's much more thought-provoking, the characters are even better, and it has a far superior twist. In turn, Three Houses is the winner in the last two categories, as it's simply a better-looking game with more atmosphere, a better soundtrack, and it has much more replay value. You could also say that Three Houses is the more solid game. While Tales of Berseria is practically carried by its story, Three Houses offers decent gameplay with a decent story, a decent level of polish, and a bunch of other decent things. To Fire Emblem's south side is Final Fantasy XV, which has a score of 64 out of 100. Final Fantasy XV has better gameplay, but an inferior story and a slightly worse level of polish, and it also scores lower in the miscellaneous category. To Fire Emblem's north side is Persona 5, which has a score of 85 out of 100. As you'd expect, Persona 5 is better in every way. It has better gameplay, it does a better job with atmosphere, it has a really distinct distinctive art style, and it has a more conceptually interesting storyline. Fire Emblem Three Houses is a good game, even though I didn't finish it. The 30 hours I put into this game were well spent. The game has an approachable blend of strategy that seems sort of titanic at first, but is actually quite simple to understand. It's also one of the only games I can remember that convincingly put you in the role of a teacher at a university, as you bond with your students, figure out their strengths, and help them reach their full potential. Still, it's sort of flawed, especially when it comes to the narrative. I did not like the mid-game twist as it chooses to ignore a long line of important in-game events. I also feel like the game is poorly balanced and poorly paced, leading to my early exit from its storyline. If you're a fan of Fire Emblem or other tactical RPGs, then I think you should enjoy this game. Even if you're not, you still might really like it. I just didn't finish it because, well, there's a lot of parts that just feel half-assed.